Coach, obviously, uh, a lot of positives in the 58 21 win on the road at the start of the season. What are some of the takeaways for you from this game? Well, uh, there's going to be a number of them. I'm really proud of the team. It's hard to win in college football, so we'll celebrate every victory. Uh, it's nice to be able to learn some lessons in a victory. Uh, there's going to be a lot to learn. I think uh, you know guys stepping up and some people got dinged up early in the game. It's great to see that. We played a lot of people on both, really in every phase, offense, defense, special teams. So seeing that number of you know the different jersey numbers running out there, including in a victory, was really big. Um, you know, uh, offensively to run the ball really efficiently and hit some big runs. You know, opens up some things. And it was uh, I think offensively. The story of the day was really, you know, the self-inflicted wounds was, were kind of the things that would stall us out, whether it was a procedure penalty or a, you know, miss block on the perimeter or something like that. Um, but we moved the ball well, put it in the end zone. Um, there's still points left out there, I would feel like, but overall proud of that group. Um, you know, defensively, really, the, if you, it's the two explosive passes. The first one's a miscommunication. On uh, something we'd seen a lot of a number of times the players and defense, we were all feeling that one because it was uh, you know something we worked. Um, so we got got to clean that up. And the second one, the technique here, hitting the big play over the top, uh, so we can eliminate the X plays, which is easier said than done. But then you're probably playing a pretty dang good game, good game on defense. Special teams, but the guys ran down and covered our kickoff. We got to shore up. Um, PAT field goal. We got to continue to work, uh, but it was good to get those reps. Okay, I do want to make sure everybody on the Zoom can hear okay, Coach Wilcox? Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. We'll go to, uh, what's your name, sir? Skyler, the AP. We'll go Skyler with the AP in the room. Go ahead, Skyler. Uh, Justin, what's it been like going through preseason camp with the uncertainty of the conference thing, and, and how does that kind of help to, to know what the future holds? Uh, yeah, it's significant. We pay attention to it, but we, you know, the team, we don't have a lot of control over any of that. Our, what we can control is practice and performing and so we really focused on that and even when the news broke um about the acc you know i think everybody was it was it was good news and but we, we talked about it for about seven seconds because we live in this world you know week to week on focusing on our opponents and uh, that does not downplay the significance incredibly important and there's going to be more to come in the coming days weeks months on on that process and what it's going to look like and the planning and you now we're going to compete at a high level and succeed there. Um, but those discussions will be had at another time. Right now, we're focused on your part. And, and one quick follow-up. You mentioned not thinking about it much yesterday, but I think one of the Zooms that was going on, you all were at the Cowboys going through practice to get ready. What was yesterday like just for you guys overall? What well, we came down a day early, so we got here on Thursday. Um, Yesterday we had meetings. We had a walkthrough right there at the Star. It's a great facility. Had a, uh, a great walkthrough. Had a bunch of meeting time yesterday. Kind of got on our body clocks right. I uh, thought the guys did a really good job. Handled it really well. So it was uh, beneficial and uh, excellent setup over there. Beautiful facility. It became obvious through a fall camp that you had three viable quarterbacks, and obviously you could see that today with Sam going down early. What are some of your thoughts, early thoughts on Ben Stanley performance? Today? Yeah, I thought he did a great job, and it's uh, it's not surprising. You know, we're not surprised that Ben went out there and did what he did. He very confident, threw the ball well, was accurate. Um, you know, he a uh, couple decisions I'm sure he'd like to have back, but uh, Ben's a competitor, and thought he did a good job. So, you know, it wasn't lip service, what we were saying all fall campus. That was legit. And Sam, you know, Sam did a heck of a job today. You know, unfortunately, got a little dinged up. Sam's going to help the team. Sam's going to help our team. And uh, we'll see kind of how how uh, quickly he can come back. And did everybody knew about Jaden Ock coming into the game as a running back threat, and he really showed what he could do today with two long TD runs. But not so many people know about Isaiah Fonze. He set the record at Montana State for career yardage, and he really showed power and uh, – Balance. balance he does he's you know he's on his feet and he's strong uh he's the vet of the group i mean he's played a lot of football as you mentioned career leader up at montana state a good football player um a very steady character man too he's a worker shows up every day doesn't say a whole lot you know they call him grandpa he looks a little older than the rest of the guys but everybody was really excited when he got in there and did what he did but it was you know we expected him to do that 
How does it fire up a team when a guy just refuses to go down for a touchdown run like that? Yeah, I think you can feel it. I mean, Bill in stands. So you can only imagine how it feels to his teammates just uh, showing that, you know, perseverance, commitment, not going down, gets everybody energized. The plan was to play Ben, even regardless of whether Sam No, or, no. no. Uh, Sam came in as a starter. He had earned the right uh, during camp to do that. But uh, as we've been talking, I mean, it was very, very competitive, and Ben did a heck of a job. And so uh, Ben's a good quarterback. You know, I think Fernando can do some good things. And uh, Sam, you know, up until that point, you saw, I think early on that first drive, we had what was a run, run, touchdown on the skinny post he threw. I mean, it was a dart. He can throw the ball, and then he had to reverse the field. Kind of looks like he's maybe going to get tackled for a seven or eight yard loss. And then, you know, he's breaks away and gets over to the sideline, turns into an eight yard game. Those things are hard to, you don't coach those things. But uh, unfortunately, he got dinged up, and then Ben Finley came in and just commanded the offense. Is there anybody else in the room that has a first round question? Okay, we'll go to our chat on Zoom. We'll start with Jeff Ferrato. Go ahead, Jeff. Make sure to speak up. Justin, uh, you, you referred a couple of times to uh, to uh, Sam getting dinged up. Can you tell us what the nature of his injury is and what you know about it so far? And, and yeah. do you have any prognosis for when he might return? Um, I have a little bit of information. I'm not going to share that quite yet. It's upper body. Um, and we'll you know, be talking with the trainers and the and the doctors in the coming days, but I, you know, I expect Span Sam to come back quickly. He was ready, uh, you know, if needed to, to hop back in, but, um, you know, he, he got dinged up a little bit. So we'll, we'll talk about what's doing, what's best for him and the team moving forward as we uh, get him healthy. Okay, we'll gonna to, Jeff, we'll move to Steve Croner and we'll get back for a second follow-up after that. Go ahead, Steve. Okay, hey, Justin, congratulations. Um, I wanted to, if you could talk a little bit more about Ben Finley, because I'm guessing the last week and a half or so, he didn't get a lot of snaps in, in practice. How was he able to do so well, uh, particularly the combination of not having enough snaps? And I got, let's be honest, the guy probably wanted the starting job, could have been disappointed and, and not fulfilled his, his role yeah. as a backup, but obviously he did. I'm sure he was disappointed. I mean, everybody who is in a competition and doesn't, you know, isn't named the starter is disappointed and I understand it and that's how it should be but uh he kept practicing and do the reps change a bit uh in the past week they do but uh I think we've talked about this before during fall camp I mean I think we got something like 1500 11 on 11 reps and Ben got a lot of those so he's had a, a number of reps under his belt with us uh, he's had a number of reps under his belt in games in previous years and uh you know he's a guy that uh, even in the past week, he's got some a fewer amount of reps, but he takes advantage of them. And it, it's not like he's getting, you know, two or four a day. He's still getting significant work. Okay, we'll open up to follow-ups on – go ahead on the Zoom first. If you do have a follow-up, we'll Matt Moreno has a question first. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, takeaways were a big part of what you guys did defensively during the spring and in camp. You had three today, three interceptions. Uh, what what did, what did you think of just how the defense played overall? Uh I thought they did a pretty good job other than the two explosive plays. And those are huge plays, in the game, you know, uh, essentially both touchdowns. The one was a touchdown. The other set up a touchdown. Uh, we've got to eliminate the explosive passes. We've been talking about that a long time. It's yeah, it's simple in concept, not easy to do. The other team schemes, they have good players too. They have a really good receiver there. Uh, gave us a couple issues. Uh, but I think if we could eliminate those two explosives and make them earn it down the field, we did a, I don't know what the third downs were. I think they were pretty good uh, defensively. And then we got we took the ball two eleven on third down, and we took the ball away three times. That's that's a good thing. So we got to continue to build on that and eliminate those explosives to play good defense. Okay, we'll open up for follow ups first on Zoom. Go to Jeff Ferrata. Justin, can you just talk about uh, your offensive line? Um, you really controlled the line of scrimmage on that side of the ball. It seemed like, and also, how is Matthew Sindrick? Uh, don't know yet about Sindo. Um, he suffered a, an injury early in the game. Really proud of Brian Driscoll and that whole group going in and working together. Awesome job by Mike Blesh of getting them working as a unit. Um, really didn't skip a beat. Um, obviously, you know, Sindo is a huge part of what we do at O-line, and so we'll, we'll be anxiously awaiting the reports from the doctors on him. Um, but I, I'm proud of that group. You know, they, uh, they worked well together today. 
uh, running the ball. There's still procedure penalties we have to clean up. And they had a couple things, you know, that I'm sure they're going to want to do better. But it was, a, you know, good to start the season that way. And now uh, we need to raise the bar every week, just like we do at every other position. Is Nate Barrell okay, or did he get injured as well? He got dinged up as well. Again, I, I, I haven't talked, guys. I haven't talked to the doctors. I don't have any updates. He did get dinged up, uh, but I don't know when, you know, how serious and if he'll be back tomorrow or Monday or Thursday. I don't know yet. And we'll go to Steve Croner from the Chronicle. Yeah, just some kind of follow up. But when we just talked about Brett Johnson during camp, did you take a moment to kind of appreciate the fact that Brett Johnson was on the field playing for the California Golden Bears for the first time yeah. in three years? I think uh, you might correct me here. Did he uh, cause the holding on the second play? Yeah. Brett? Yes. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So the second play of the game, they had a little quarterback scramble draw built in and the guy had to hold him. So he doesn't make the tackle and it doesn't go in the stat sheet, but the ball goes backwards 10 yards because, you know, he's a hard guy to block. So yeah, at that moment, uh, I mean, in, in warmups, I love seeing number 90 out there. And when we take the field on defense, I love watching number 90 jog out there as does everybody else on our team. And then the second play of the game, he forces a holding call and then we get off the field in three plays and, you know, the offense went down and scored. So you you better believe it. We were all kind of internal fist pump. Okay, we'll go back to Thank Jeff Brado. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Justin, you mentioned Mike Blesch. Um, you talk about just Jake Spavital's offense today overall, 669 yards. Um, most points Cal has scored in a game since 2015. Um, you must have just been real pleased by this is sort of what you hopefully envisioned, right? Yes, and we we expected to come out and play well. And listen, if you're if you were on the headsets on offense during the game, you know this is not one of those situations where Spav and everybody on offense patting each other on the back. This is well, we just you know gave up this. We we need to do that better. You know, here's a a penalty. We you know we stopped ourselves on that drive. So it's great, as I mentioned before, to learn some of these lessons and demand more. This needs to be the floor, you know, for all of us. Now to say you're going to get 95 plays and 670 yards every week, I don't know if that's realistic, but um, we we have some good players. We felt like we matched up well, um, that we should be able to move the ball on them, and we did. And uh, I'm really, you know, Spav and, and that whole side of the ball, all those coaches and all those players that, that uh, contributed today, it was just awesome. And uh, appreciate all those guys. It was a – a big day for him. Okay, guys. Uh, you ready, Dave? Yep, yep. Okay. All right. We're here with offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Jake Spavadol. We'll go ahead and start with questions from within the room. Keep it to a single question the first time around, please. Good, Jim. Jake, we were looking at the uh, offensive numbers in, in Cal's history, and the last time Cal put up points like this in the first half and in the game where you're here in 2016. Is it nice to get back to business and do it again? Yeah, no, it felt good. Yeah, it really did. Uh, I, I thought that, you know, when I first got here, you know, there was a lot of unknowns and, you know, just the conversations we had through the spring practices over the summertime and into fall camp. Uh, I really thought these kids really flipped the switch uh, roughly about practice 10 that we talked about. And, uh, I was really proud of how they uh, just bought into what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I think this was a really good game for them to kind of get some confidence going into next week. But uh, we still got a lot. To, we, we left a lot out there, you know, uh, with the two turnovers, a uh, few false starts that were pretty critical at times, a couple of drop balls, uh, some mis-execution on some things. Uh, so there, there's a lot of improvement in the future for us, but uh, it felt good to get out there and uh, watch some of those guys make a lot of plays because it's a testament to them and the coaching staff for all the hard work that they put in. As a camp observer, it was obvious there was the ingredients there to have an explosive offense, but there's a solid defense out there competing against them too, so it's a lot of back and forth. Is it kind of a relief to see that production yeah. take place in the first game? No, that's a, that's a big deal is uh, just the way Coach Sermon played on defense. You know, like we had a lot of short fields. Uh, we were kind of struggling for some things at times, uh, got hit on some negative plays, uh, a lot of self-inflicted wounds, which you're probably going to hear that a lot over the next week. And uh, But just to have a defense like Coach Sherman and just to give us the opportunities to take advantage of when uh, uh, I thought we had 
some pretty good complimentary football at times. We capitalized off of their turnovers. I think they had three turnovers. I believe we scored on all three of them. Um, but that being said, we also had the fumble that uh, put them in a bad spot that they scored on. So, uh, you know, it's always good to have a great defense. It is, and, uh, you know, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to come back to Cal is that I knew that they're going to play solid defense. So Sam got off to a good start um, before he got hurt, and then, then Ben came in and put up some really good numbers, too. Obviously, he has some starting experience at North Carolina, but right up from state, but he, he didn't have a lot of time to get acclimated here just coming in on the fall. Are you, are you happy with the performance, what you saw out there? Yeah, I am. I think Ben is pretty funny because uh, he's just got this gunslinger mentality. I don't think he would care if there was – you know, five people in the stands or five million people in the stands, he's going to go out there and sling the ball around and do what he's always done. He's very confident in what he's uh, uh, in his ability. And having that experience was one of the reasons why we threw him in the game. Um, you know, Sam, I thought, was was playing well. You know, there's a couple of busted assignments that uh, we had to overcome. It's the self-inflicted wounds, and uh, he was starting to move the ball. But to be put in that situation on a third down and, and put uh, Ben in the game and just to execute that, uh, you know, really proud of how he handled it. I think he's still going to keep getting better on a day by day basis, uh, just because he's only been here since uh, June. So, um, you know, he's a kid that uh, took the news of Sam starting as uh, really a challenge to improve. I thought he practiced extremely well. Uh, that's also the, you know, looking at, you know, how the backup quarterbacks are going to handle the news of another person starting. And he handled it well and practiced well. And I had full confidence of him going again. And yeah, we'll go over to Zoom. Uh, Ryan, did you have a question? Was it for Coach Wilcox or Coach Spav? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Ryan, from Daily Cal. Coach, you mentioned that um, you left some points on the table today. What's your message, given all the other success on the offense? What's your message to the offense oh, no. for the next week? Yeah, the, a lot of uh, our conversations, you know, we, we had a few scrimmages in fall camp that ended up that way, uh, where – uh, a lot of our issues right now are self-inflicted. When we stall out offensively, it's the majority our fault and, um, you know, our, our, us putting ourselves in those uh, scenarios. But, um, you know, these guys, like, there's a standard and expectation that we have in that offensive room that uh, it's not about who we're playing. It's not about, you know, it's anything that other people do to us. It's just, you know, how do we handle the adversity? How do we overcome it? How do we make sure that we're minimizing negative plays, playing uh, efficient football? And uh, just listening to the dialogue of those guys on the sideline, they know that um, we left a lot out there and we're not playing to the, the standard and expectation that we preach about all the time. And uh, they know that we got a lot of work. They're happy and excited for the success they had, but they know that we still got to get back to work and get a lot better. Okay, we'll go ahead and go to Jeff Frado. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Jake, uh, throughout the uh, fall camp, you were – telling us you couldn't wait until September 2nd to get to see uh, what Jade Knott looks like when you take the uh, shackles off a little bit. And 41 yards on his first touch today. What did, what did you think of how Jade Knott played? Yeah, you know, for all the times he was upset with me on not letting him go live in those uh, scrimmages, I think that play kind of summarized it all up. Uh, you know, he was always uh, extremely mad at me uh, for limiting him and uh, you know, but there's a reason why, you know, he's a, he's an elite running back and we got to keep him healthy. And, uh, I felt like he had a, like, what do you have? Like 180 yards or so, like, which is a, that's a pretty impressive stat alone right there when you're talking about that. So, uh, we go as that rushing game goes, you know, and especially in a situation where you lose the starting quarterback and you're, you throw in another guy in a different scenario, uh, just to have that viability of a strong run game and Jade not. Uh, it really puts the pressure off that quarterback and uh, just was fired up to actually see him go live for the first time. And, uh, and he is, he's what they always talk about. You know, he's the real deal. And uh, I'm excited about what he's going to build off of uh, moving forward. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, keep going with the single question and then we'll check for follow-ups after that. Steve Croner from the Chronicle. Yeah, Jake, congratulations. Did your uh, game plan change much at all, a little, uh, once you had to go with Ben instead of uh, Sam? No, it, you know, just the beauty of game one, uh, we had, I had like four game plans available, like just for one for Fernando, one for Ben, one for Sam, uh, you know, one for just the rushing attack on what we needed to get to. Uh, so it, it, we got some good evaluations. The thing that how we practice, we do a lot of live scenarios, a lot of play the game. So I know what these guys are capable of doing and what's their, their, their comfort. That's the, that's, I think a very big key to calling plays is what are these guys comfortable running? And, uh, 
you know, Ben's a gunslinger type of guy. He's a bigger body. So he, like, I knew that I could get to a little bit more quick game and kind of the over, over the middle throws. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do with Sam. So we were ready for all quarterbacks being able to play. Uh, and, you know, who would have thought that I would have played three of them in this game? But uh, I thought it was awesome that they all had their opportunity to go. And I think they're all going to be looking forward to see what it tells next week. Okay, we'll go back to Jeff, and we do want to be efficient here. We've got a few players to get through as well. So go ahead, Jeff. Jake, uh, we don't know, I guess, the status of Sam for next week, but how confident would you be in Ben if he started against, obviously, what's going to be a better opponent in Auburn? Yeah, yeah I thought Sam handled this scenario really well. Like, I thought he, uh, just the leadership side of him, you know, like, I, I'm always keeping an eye on these QBs and the way Sam approached this week and how he had the walkthroughs leading up to the game and, uh, you know, Sam's ready to play at a high level, you know, and uh, I would I would like, depending on what the doctors say, you know, I, I want to keep playing that kid. I think he's very dynamic in what he does. And I think Ben's really good, too. And I think Fernando has his, you know, strong suits as well. Uh, but, you know, just, you know, looking at like the outcome of this game, you know, I feel comfortable with playing any of them, you know, and uh, this game just does not define, you know, really Sam, Ben or Fernando. You know, we got to keep continuously getting better. And. Uh, all three of them, we had a good meeting after uh, the game and, you know, they're all ready to get back into rehab, get ready to go. And uh, let's go through everything we got at Auburn next week. Hey, Jim, go ahead, Jim. We asked the coach about Isaiah Fonze, um, but uh, Asha Stradek and J.B. Thomas got some good opportunities late in the game, too. What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, I thought they were, you know, there's still going to be a lot to critique off the tape, you know, especially with Isaiah as well. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we're looking for that guy to take the load off of Jay Nod when uh, when he, he can't go 9,000 plays like I felt like he went today. So uh, we got a lot of good evaluations in. Just to get Jed in at the end, uh, Javen, I thought he was running. Uh, he wasn't scared. You know, I thought he had an opportunity to hit a big play. I thought he was going to get a house call on one of those uh, on a great cutback play back into the boundary. But uh, just to see how those guys like uh, were – we're ready for their opportunity to go out there. Uh, extremely proud of Isaiah. Just to be thrown in that scenario, have three rushing touchdowns, and uh, that that goes back to the experience that he has. Um, and played a lot of football, but having Ashton Stradek out there, who I think is a dynamic player, and being in, in you know his home state of Texas, I thought it was great for him to get some touches and then get a rookie like Dave and uh, get a couple touches as well. So, uh, really proud of all three of them. But uh, you know, we still got a lot of, a lot of room for improvement, and uh, but we still it's good to have a lot of evals right now. 